Thanks, Roy. Uh, what we're now going to do is we're now going to try to take the vision that Roy laid out. I'm going to invite Mohini and Jean and Bob and Mark and Carson up here. And what we're going to try and do is we're trying to envision and ask a very specific question. If there were a certified community behavioral health center in your community, how would that make a difference? Would the kind of visioning that Roy described of us being better than, is that something that we can put into place in Kent County, Michigan, in Kansas City, Missouri, in Newark, New Jersey, in drug courts through the United States? So I want to invite you up to answer that question and to see whether we can actually manifest the type of spirit that Roy expressed. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. It's uh, truly an honor to be with you today. I'm Mohini Venkatesh, um, and I um, am the Vice President of Practice Improvement at the National Council for Behavioral Health. The purpose of the panel this afternoon, as uh, Steve just described, is to really talk through what are the current challenges that are at play with offering behavioral health services within the criminal justice system. And um, I'm also going to take some moderator prerogative um, and hope that we can also talk through opportunities that exist now and in the future, thanks to CCBHCs. As we think through sort of what are those windows of opportunity, what's commonly utilized is the sequential intercept model, as you see here. This is a conceptual framework that identifies key moments uh, to intervene um, with services to prevent people with mental health and substance use disorders from getting further entrenched within the criminal justice system. This isn't a new model. It's been around for quite some time, and we know that jurisdictions around the country are utilizing it to really find those windows of opportunity to try to add in new services, test out new models um, to try to help this population. When I look at this, um, and I was reflecting on uh, this opportunity to be with you today, um, I thought a lot about uh, someone I talk about very often as I'm traveling the country doing presentations. Um, I'll call her Sheila. She's a DC public high school student uh, that I mentored through a big, bro big Brothers Big Sisters program. And I want to share a little bit of information about her because I think it really helps to bring home much of the passion that's been described by many of your other presenters today. She's a biracial, now 18-year-old, um, who has been living in DC for the past six years. She's moved around a lot around the country. Um, I've been working with her for the past three years or so, um, trying to help her focus um, on what her educational goals are for the future. She has so much incredible potential, but really no societal anchor whatsoever. Uh, she's an outcast in school, by and large. Um, uh, she ties it primarily to racial politics that are at play um, within her school. She doesn't really fit in anywhere. She's very commonly suspended. Um, she struggles in a lot of her classes. She has a very unstable home. Um, her parents are not there consistently. They struggle with addiction issues. Um, and she's experienced a lot of trauma, um, repeatedly being sexually assaulted, um, and is on antidepressants. Um, and while she has access to these medications, it's not consistent. She's not getting the therapy that she needs. Um, and certainly her family is not being provided much support. She's currently in a detention facility. And this is not the first time that this has happened. The last time she was released, within 24 hours, she was sexually assaulted by someone in her home and within four days was back in another detention facility. So um, I guess the question is, why do I share this story? It's certainly not unique. I'm sure that all of you have stories you could share similarly um, about people that you know personally or professionally that are simply falling through the cracks right now. When I look at this model, I see such incredible opportunity to intervene for people like Sheila and the Sheilas around the country um, that so desperately need our help. And when I look ahead and I think about the comments that Senator Stabenow provided this morning of the true potential of certified community behavioral health clinics, I think through what could happen 20 years from now, or perhaps quicker since we're on a more urgent timeline, What's the potential here for the Sheilas around the country um, to really provide them with well-rounded access to services in a time that they need it, um, giving their family the help that they need to try to prevent them from even entering the justice system? 
So with that, I'm very excited to introduce um, our esteemed panel this afternoon. And we are going to first get started with uh, Jean Peters Baker. Um, she is a prosecutor for Jackson County, Missouri. Good afternoon. 